Our next pathogen is Clostridia. And in the cases here, we're going to talk, be talking about Clostridium difficile. These are gram-positive endospore-forming strict anaerobes and obligate fermenters. Because of their spore formation, they are ubiquitous in the environment and they can be very difficult to deal with in the hospital setting. Clostridia in the soil live as saprobes, degrading organic material. They can also be found in water and as part of the normal microbiota in humans. Now, specifically, Clostridium difficile is probably the most important from a medical perspective. It was not identified until 1978 as a disease agent. Today, it is the main cause of infectious diarrhea after hospitalization and antibiotic use. There are 101 cases per 100,000, and it's estimated there are 500,000 cases of C. difficile per year in the U.S. 4,533 deaths per year are also reported in the United States. The incidence of complications is relatively high. Originally, this is mainly a problem for the elderly, but we're seeing increased cases in young uh, children with no previous antibiotic use and in the community. Transmission again is fecal to oral. C. diff is a complicated infection for humans. It appears to be part of the normal bi microbiota of some people and causes no problems at all. Some strains are non-toxigenic and colonize humans asymptomatically. However, some strains produce toxins that cause mild to severe bloating and abdominal pain. In some patients with a strong IgG response to the toxins, they are able to control this infection. In the absence of a strong immune response, C. diff pathogenesis occurs, including fever, leukocytosis, which is high blood, white blood cell count in, in the intestines or in the blood, uh, pseudomembranous colitis, which is an inflammation of the colon caused by C. difficile, toxic megacolon, which is a large dilation of the colon, sepsis shock, and sometimes death. Pathogenesis. We're going to talk about one feature of this organism, which is the toxin that it expresses. The toxic megacolon is the result of the expression of two toxins, TCDA and TCDB. These are classic AB toxins that damage cells by inactivating the rack and row GDPases. These are signaling molecules that are in the membranes of intestinal cells. These membrane proteins are important cell signaling molecules and their inactivation causes cell rounding and cell death, apoptosis. This results in a strong inflammatory response, the formation of a pseudomembrane in the intestines, the growth of the bacteria, and gas. Clostridium difficile is infamous for the amount of gas they produce, and you'll get, as you can see, this is a child demonstrating uh, being infected with C. diff, this giant distension caused by the gas of the, or the organism pr pr is producing. This causes a lot of misery and uh, physical problems for the person, pain and discomfort, so it's a, a, a very ugly disease. Diagnosis of C. difficile involves uh, using some type of rapid test. Culturing in the bacterium is usually not done because it is a strict anaerobe, so it's more difficult to grow. They will test your stool by immunoassay for tox A or B, uh, or they may do a PCR test, and the PCR has primers that uh, bind to either side of the tox B gene and amplify it. So those are the two ways that this can be tested. How do you prevent or, or treat this? So prevention is important. It's important to spread the spread of C. diff, especially in healthcare settings. These behaviors can decrease the spread of the illness. First of all, good hand hygiene for healthcare working and anybody that's in the room with someone who has a C. diff infection, right? Washing your hands, disinfecting them, etc. Disinfecting common equipment, for example, electronic thermometer handles that are used between patients. 
the use of sporocytal hypochlorite or bleach is really useful because it will uh, hypochlorite is really good at killing spores that can uh, take greatly decrease the amount of spores and C. diff that is found. Also, changing the practices of antibiotics prescriptions. Penicillin vancomycin lower risk, while prescription of cephalosporins or clindamycin increase the incidence of the disease. The illness is often brought on by treatment with antibiotics and it is somewhat ironic that a typical treatment is with further antibiotics. In 20% of cases when you treat with antibiotics, there is a recurrence of the illness. If things get really bad, surgery can be done to remove the affected region of the colon, and that's sometimes employed in extreme infections. Another exciting treatment that's come about is fecal microbiota transplantation, and it's a treatment that I'll talk about on the next slide. So here's an example of what was done. Uh, investigations by Weingarten et al. indicate the disease arises when antibiotic treatment suppresses the normal micro microbiota. Compare the left panel, which is healthy donors, to the right panel, which is someone in the middle of a C. diff infection. Okay? What happens is the antibiotics decrease diversity and they change the bile acid makeup. There's fewer organisms in the microbiome that can degrade bile acids that your gallbladder produces into these secondary bile acids. And these second secondary bile acids are inhibitory to C. diff. Since you have fewer secondary bile acids, it encourages C. difficile germination and growth. It can overgrow and then cause all the problems that it does. Now, Weingarten hypothesized that if the microbiome changed, and allowed C. diff infection, if you could somehow get the microbiome back to what it was before, it would cure it. And what they did is Weingarten um, showed that if afflicted patients were given a microbiota from a healthy donor, and again, healthy donors are here, here's the C. diff in patients, you give them a microbiome transplant, which is basically, you can do that either by uh, an enema, or they've now developed pills that you can take that will donate a microbiome. That microbiome will get released, it will overtake, start making the secondary bile acids and suppress the C. diff infection. The success rate for cure was over 95% in these cases. Amazingly, the AMA and CDC still recommend antibiotic treatment for first cases and only suggest microbiome transplants if the first line treatment with vancomycin fails. I personally think that should be changed, but I'm not a physician. They may have their reasons. Okay, that is it for Clostridium difficile.